Let us move forward, we will check whether we can fulfill process P1's need. P1 doesn't need resource A. P1 needs 4 instances of resource B, and we have 6 instances free, so we can fulfill this need. Next it requires 2 instances of resource C, and we have 3 instances free, so we can fulfill this need. Next it requires 1 instance of resource D, but we do not have any instances left of resource D. We can provide resource A, B and C but we cannot provide resource D. So we cannot fulfill need of process P1, we need to move ahead. Let us check process P2. It requires one instance of resource A, and one instance of resource D, we have instances of resource A, but don't have instances of D left. So process P2 also cannot be executed. Let us check for process P3, process P3 requires only two instances of resource C. And we have three instances of C left. So we can fulfill the need of process P3. So what will happen is, according to allocation matrix, process P3 already has six instances of resource B, three instances of resource C and two instances of resource D. And according to need matrix it requires two more instances of resource C. And we have the availability according to available matrix. So we will provide two instances from available resources to P3. The available matrix will get updated, and we will minus the two given instances of resource C. Now the available matrix will be 1, 6, 1, and 0. Now as process P3 has all resources it required for execution, it will finish the execution. And the resources held by it will be released. It has no instance of resource A, so 0. Then it will release 6 instances of resource B, 5 instances of resource C, and 2 instances of resource D. So the available matrix will get updated. It will be 1, 12, 6, and 2. So now the updated mat rises will be as follows, available resources will get updated. And P3's need is completed. P3 will get added to the sequence, as it is executed after P0. Now let us check process P4, note that we are going in a serial order, like P1, then P2, and so on, but you can solve it in any order. And each time you can have different sequence. And that's okay. So let us get back to the video, P4 requires 0 instance of resource A, 6 instances of resource B, and we have 12 free, 4 instances of resource C, and we have 6 free, and 2 instances of resource D, and we got 2 of them. So we can provide the required number of resources to P4. So this is what will happen, according to allocation matrix, process P4 already has no instances of resource A and B. 1 instance of resource C and 4 instances of resource D. It requires 6 instances of resource B, 4 instances of resource C and 2 instances of resource D, according to the need matrix. And we have the availability according to available matrix. So we will provide 6 instances of resource B, 4 instances of resource C, and 2 instances of resource D from available resources. So they will get minus from the matrix. And we will have 1 instances of resource A, 6 instances of resource B, 2 instances of resource C and 0 instances of resource D left. As P4 will get its required resources it will complete its execution, and after completion release the allocated resources. It has no instance of resource A, so 0. Then it will release 6 instances of resource B, 5 instances of resource C and 6 instances of resource D. So the available matrix will get updated. It will be 1, 12, 7, and 6. So now the updated mat rises will be as follows, available resources will get updated. And P4's need is completed. P4 will get added to the sequence after P3 as it got executed after P3. Now as we got to bottom of table, we need to start from top, let us check process P1. P1 requires 0 instance of resource A, 4 instances of resource B, and we have 12 free, 
two instances of resource C, and we have seven free, and one instances of resource D, and we got six of them. So we can provide the required number of resources to P1. So this is what will happen, according to allocation matrix process P1 already has one instance of resource A. And two instances of resource B. Three instance of resource C, and one instance of resource D. It requires four instances of resource B, two instances of resource C and one instance of resource D, according to the need matrix. And we have the availability, as per available matrix. So we will provide four instances of resource B, two instances of resource C, and one instance of resource D from available resources. So they will get minus from the matrix and we will have one instance of resource A, eight instances of resource B, five instances of resource C and five instances of resource D left. As P1 will get its required resources, it will complete its execution, and after completion release the allocated resources. It will release one instance of resource A, six instances of resource B, five instances of resource C and two instances of resource D. So the available matrix will get updated. It will be 2, 14, 10, and 7. So now the updated mat rises will be as follows, available resources will get updated. And P1's need is completed. P1 will get added to the sequence after P4. Now let us check the last left process, P2. P2 requires one instance of resource A, and we have two free, zero instances of resource B, zero instances of resource C, and one instance of resource D and we got seven of them. So we can provide the required number of resources to P2. So this is what will happen, according to allocation matrix, process P2 already has one instance of resource A, and three instances of resource B, six instance of resource C, and five instances of resource D. It requires one instance of resource A and one instance of resource D, according to the need matrix. And we have the availability. So we will provide one instance of resource A and one instance of resource D, from available resources, so they will get minus from the matrix. And we will have one instances of resource A, 14 instances of resource B, 10 instances of resource C and 6 instances of resource D left. As P2 will get its required resources it will complete its execution, and after completion release the allocated resources. It will release 2 instances of resource A, 3 instances of resource B, 6 instances of resource C and 6 instances of resource D. So the available matrix will get updated. It will be 3, 17, 16, and 12. So now the updated mat rises will be as follows, available resources will get updated. And P2's need is completed. P2 will get added to the sequence after P1. As all the processes are executed, and all resources got free, this means that this state is a safe state. That means deadlock cannot occur in this state. If with available resources, we are unable to complete requests, of all processes, then that state will be an unsafe state, and deadlock may occur in that state. But in this example, all processes can be executed, so this state is safe state, and the sequence that we generated is safe sequence. That means if we execute processes in this sequence, we can achieve safe state. This is how deadlock avoidance, and banker's algorithm works. See you in the next video with next concept. Thank you.